Galway are one of the top three teams in the country. And that's as simple as that. Tipperary, I know Waterford were in the All-Ireland final last year, and Tipperary have been knocking on the door, no doubt they'll push as well. But we're there, thereabouts. Now, we're having this conversation just before the opening game of the um, league. That's yeah. next week. I think it's against King Kenny, is it? But, um, so we have, no, we're not... Yeah, we Claire, yeah. Claire, is it? Is it? Yeah. Sorry, my apologies. It's, uh, I was, um, it, 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 the, we don't actually know who's in or out yet. And no, that'll be important. Yeah. Like, I thought last year was a very, very good year for Galway Kamogi. Uh, we won a league title, but we also lost five key players at the start of the year. Like, Heather Cooney retired and she was allowed to slip away quietly, which is another thing that I was to be hunting critical of. We should be celebrating our great players when they do step away because yeah. they've given so much to Goy Kamogi. Lorraine Ryan, a couple of years ago, gone barely, barely worried about it. Yeah. Neve Kenny, we don't know her situation at the moment. Yeah. Will she be back? Will she not? Uh, obviously, Sarah Durbin was late coming back in last year, and then you had Sarah Healy and Catherine Fennerty away too. So it was challenging. I think we're bringing in all the intermediates as well that won the All Ireland the, the previous year. When you look at the results, we won the league of the seniors. The intermediates were competitive in all their matches. I know they didn't get the results, but yeah. that when you're talking of technically a third string team, that was a great innings on year one for Connor Dolan as well. Was, so go back yeah. to the question. Yeah. You asked me this year. Look, there'll be pressure on Colin Murray this year because we haven't been in our Ireland final in 2021. Well, Galway now expects to be in all Ireland finals. So do Cork, so do Kenny. We've been squeezed out the last couple of years. The league again. Look, we, we hear rumours and bits and bobs, who's in, who's out. Until that opening game of the league, we won't know the answers to that for certain. And I think we'd be better qualified to talk then. Hopefully, there's a few of those players I mentioned back. No doubt there'll be one or two that are gone away as well. A good league, but again, it's about finding finding players. like The Maroon and White Pod brought to you by CityLink. For bookings, timetables, updates and any other information, head to citylink.ie. So, um... They definitely hadn't their full squad to play with this weekend. No, I don't think Connor had his full squad. Maybe he didn't know that at the time when he was chatting to us. But yeah, because you were saying yeah. right, that the team was kind of changed or maybe there was, was players unavailable. No, it wasn't. There wasn't massive changes or anything, but definitely they were without some of their kind of uh, more prominent players, we'll mm-hmm. say. Um, and I think they had uh, they had a training camp or something with the seniors. So obviously you're going to take your chance at senior when it comes, but I just thought maybe the timing wasn't hectic for them because the actual the intermediates ended up losing it. Now they looked well in control of the game. It was poor enough now. It wasn't I think it was one ten to nine for a finish, but okay. Galway looked in control kind of and then the next thing Cork uh, rallied back and uh, kept getting point after point and silly freeze and do you know what I really noticed about the game was the referee was really uh, pulling up for the hand pass. Okay, so very technical. Well, oh, at the end of the day, no, and, and they weren't like they were hand passing, but do you know the way now the it's rules gone. change? Remember, and yeah. it has to be a striking. Yeah, it has well, to be a striking. Yeah, and it wasn't. So that's yeah, but it's so disappointing. Those, yeah, the hand pass is one of those close calls because they give the impression that they're throwing it, but it's actually leaving it. They're just doing it so quick. I know, it's and that's a skill in itself too. It's, like it's it's hard to know, but anyway, you have to you have to go with what the referees are kind of going with now and see how consistent they are. So you have to show that there's a striking um, action with the hand mm. when you're given the hand pass. But yeah, disappointing for them. So they're out again in two weeks' time now against Claire. And okay. I've got her turn off. You better My mobile. Yeah. If it'd be given out about media and social media and then too much time <laughs> on the phone and here she is and her phone I'm is turning nice. it off. I'm turning it off. It's as loud as that. But, and what were the conditions like in Canberra? You know, Canberra's always kind of breezy. It was. It was uh, like that now. Very, very cold and breezy. But uh, I mean, both teams were a good while warming up and stuff like that. It's hard conditions for Camogie. And obviously we know that the inter-provincials are on this weekend in Beacon. In Beacon. Or Bacon. Right. Bacon. Bacon as it's known down in Bacon. Or, or where, yeah. what do they call it? The Centre of, Center of Ex- Excellence. The Air Dome. Yeah. And look at it's great opportunity. It's in the West. It's only an hour from from Galway really, you know, and NUIG. Should look at when you when I say NUIG are represented, sure there's girls all over the country oh, representing yeah. colleges. Yeah. Between DCU and UCC and shout out to all the girls. Yeah, and it's in, the pinnacle of um do you know of oh, like I remember in myself when we enjoyed it and I remember getting to an Ashburn semi final, then winning a Purcell and then getting to an Ashburn final in I think it was 99 or something like that. Oh, easy now. Oh, easy you're giving away. Oh, I know, yeah. Me? But I, mean? I was very young in college. I was <laughs> college quite early. You, yeah. you, you, I was see, just one of those geniuses. <laughs> <laughs> 
you were very, so 14, very, yeah. very, 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 14, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, look, best, best wishes to all, all involved, both the girls themselves and any, any, any Galway girls in any, in any kind of competitions, like whether it's Ashburn or the Purses or any other competition. Geez, I remember the times in uh, UL with a brilliant team at the time. It was, it was a three in a row at the time and UL kind of dominated for a while. Mm. And then I think, um, there in the last couple of years, they got four or five in a row as well, and yeah. UCD were coming. Do you know? So it's nice that it's moving around Absolutely, a bit as well. Yeah, because DIT, it was all Watford DIT were very Watford, strong yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah and UC, UCC. Yeah, you know. Oh, yeah. So it's great that um, it's moving around, and um, best wishes as well to GMIT and there. Well, not GMIT anymore. ATU. ATU. Mm -hmm. So and and to all the colleges, they'll be happening on Saturday. Um, in Beacon yeah. or Bacon, um, Bacon as it's known yeah. to so tonight tonight we have we're lucky enough now to have um, Darren Des. Kelly yeah Daz um, Mataz as I would call him now and again as Arazamataz Arazamataz <laughs> Daz Mataz and yeah we'll be we'll be chatting all things Camogie with Darren Kelly as we know he's the voice of Camogie now of late and, yeah. and let's not forget Sean Walsh that was, was started, started, really, right? started yeah. really and Darren has uh, taken up that role and has been wonderfully promoting uh, the female sport uh, both on and and off the field and um, I'm looking forward to to chatting to Darren. Well that's for sure I mean sure he's he's a commentator he's an editor he's a producer you know he had his own podcast there for a long time Um, he was a long time maybe 19 years with um, Galway Bay FM Right. And um, he jumped ship for a little while, probably just needed a change. Went to, he, did. he took a break clear, and he went to the neighbours. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Look, we said, listen, the neighbours can have you for a little while, but make sure and come back. And he and did. He did. <laughs> he did. But um, he, when he went to kind of Clare FM, it was more so for um, football, yes. the ladies' football. Mm -hmm. So um, not alone, when he when he moved, I think it was 2020, if I'm not mistaken, that I think we, was, we can ask yeah. him right now, yeah. in uh, Clare FM. And he won um, the journalist, football journalist of the year. Um, which is a massive thing in the, yeah. in the you know, the LGFA yes, calendar. Yes. So he won that. But he also won for his podcast as well um, in the Camogie Media Awards when he started up his podcast as well. So, I mean, he doesn't do anything by halves. And, no, you he know, certainly doesn't. And he's extremely passionate. And, you know, you, you don't, I suppose you don't have to watch the game, to, obviously, when you're listening on the radio. Yeah, he's under his passion and his... His energy comes out uh, in, in the radio, and that's what you want. Like you know, at the end of the day, when you're commentating, you have to bring the game to life because you're not watching it. And he, and he and certainly sure does, does that yeah. in abundance. And he's at every dogfight when it comes to games. Yeah, no, he know? is, and and he's very passionate about his own club there in Ballinasloe as well. And I suppose the big thing is he promotes women in sport, and he's always been an advocate for it. Um, you know, whether it's camogie, or like you know, a hurling, football, yeah. whatever is going on, he's always advocating for women, which is great. And it's great to have him on tonight. And Absolutely, he's yeah. a massive knowledge of Camogie as well. So, um, and obviously now we have, um, you know, Imelda, um, you know, on the radio now, yes. and kind of taking his, I suppose, taking the reins off him and onwards and upwards for those as well. So will we will we soon have a chat with him? We will, yeah, once he joins us. I, I thought I'd seen him in there. No, he's all right yeah, for a minute. Our, our technical true crew were still on holidays from from last week with the cups <laughs> of coffee but um, our lighting is a little bit better and hopefully we won't have any any interferences um so bef before he comes on we might chat about um the new findings that, that yes, came out yes yeah. they were very interesting actually <laughs> they were they were kind of scary weren't they They were and i suppose any of you that follow the camogie association website you know new findings came out this week on um the whole idea of meaningful play when it comes to the game of camogie mm. and the research that was done and the recommendations and the findings and Jesus, the the results of it were quite startling. Yeah, you know, well, I suppose the one thing I seen out was the the main thing that came uh, to the player welfare was the parents of complaints for yes. not yeah, uh, enough was, playing time. Yeah, so the, the not, or I, shared playing time. No, I'm not. I'm it not, was a launch basically. Myself and Eva were kind of um, looking up or looking into it, and it was a launch on. The recommendations on meaningful playing time for players. So what basically went down was the Camogie Association decided to address the findings on the lack of meaningful full play and they came up with serious findings and one of them there I just had a few little bullet points written down was the current rules and structures at the moment 37% of club um, uh, of clubs stated that the complaints 
by parents over the lack of playing time for their daughters was one of the major issues or talking points. 37%. That was, the, but like, do you know, it, that's, it's fairly vague, like as, do you know, because it's not it saying like, you know, what age the kids are. No, it didn't. It just how, said how, overall. How much training have they gone to? Because yeah, exactly. we, we always speak of, of this at the coach developers courses, you know, and yes. at the introduction to Get It Game courses that we do. Like we always say you have to be fair and, you know, playing time has to be given. But like if a child isn't coming training at all for under sixes or under eights, mm. That's not the child's fault, obviously, because the child doesn't drive. No, the child doesn't drive. But what do you do? Like, do you set out a culture like we've always spoke about, you know, setting out the culture that, you know, playing time would reflect your training time or like you can't be that strict at under six or under eight or what do you well, do? No, you can't. It's, it's each club. For, so do you play a child that hasn't come training at all? Well, according to this, yes, well, you have to. Unfortunately, yeah. that is what, you know, ha what is happening in, yeah. in clubs. And yes, people complain and, you know, I suppose partially they're entitled to complain but at the end of the day it's probably falling on deaf ears in a lot of clubs mm -hmm. you know but that's that's for another that's probably day. for another day and um, another one that i found very interesting and Aoife, you probably agree with me on this is 52 percent of under 14 females reported were playing up an age to under 16 so you have 15 year olds mm -hmm. who've come of age yeah and then you have maybe three or four under 14 sometimes the 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 philosophy is, you know, if you're old enough, you're good enough. Or if yeah. you're good enough, you're, you're old, old enough. enough. Yeah. And you have three or four, maybe 14-year-olds taking the place of the 15-year-olds. Yeah. To me, that's a little grey area. It is, yeah. Now, I know that another part of that was that smaller clubs had to play younger girls, which is fair enough, you know, that they yes. didn't have the age group. But it is tough on a on a young one that's fifteen and it's her last year or whatever. Yeah. And you and she's been putting in the time. I and, know. And, and you yeah. just don't know. Is it fair? Do you do it? I I don't know. It is a grey area. I don't know, but it is a grey area. But again, doesn't it all come back to your clubs and the standards that they're setting? You do. And we we'll say just because myself and Eva say if our Drahan are doing it and Ballandurian aren't doing it, who's at a loss and who's at a at an advantage? I know. Yeah. Okay. Oh, have we been joined? I think we have. The, the man of the moment. The man of the moment. <laughs> Darren Kelly, how are you doing? Doing? You're very welcome. I'm good, Aoife. Good, Martina. Great to be here. And great to see you, Darren. I'm sure your ears were burning. You were probably watching us, or you were, well, I suppose you can't listen to us because we have to <laughs> We have to go live yet, Darren. We were, we were blowing your profile anyhow out of, out of the water and correct us if we're wrong. Aoife had a date and we just want to, to clarify. First of all, you are very welcome and we're absolutely delighted. Normally it's you doing the interview and, and us trying to <laughs> escape escape when we see you coming. But <laughs> I spotted Darren last weekend, Aoife, I'm sure he, he filled you in at um, the post-primary A uh, hurling final, St. Raphael's College. We're playing Prez at the Ryan. Shout out and congrats to St. Raphael's. Doesn't she love getting in? Ray feels this and Ray feels <laughs> oh, that. Yeah. Please give us, give us a break, will you? But anyway, oh, the great year for Ray feels and a great day too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I met Darren. I'm only um, I met Darren. I was, I was heading to the ladies and Darren had said that he was enjoying our podcast. And I said, how are you fixed? And um, one thing about you is, unlike others, you didn't run away or shy away. So um, we're really, we're really grateful right, to that. So Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so Aoife... So yeah, Darren, we were saying obviously you're you're a producer, you're a commentator, you're a writer, you're an editor. Like you've been a brilliant advocate for Camogie for like 20, 30 years. Do you know what I mean? You've just been absolutely brilliant. And we always remember you with when you were starting out and you know with the Galway seniors years and years ago. Um we had you on the bus and like I remember just admiring you so much back there then. Many, how... many stories in the bus, there, Eva. Oh yeah, but we won't tell many stories in the bus. <laughs> That's why you're on tonight. The uh, we'll tell them the story at some stage about the 50 seconds. <laughs> we'll say no more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've forgotten about that so long ago. But, um, like, we just, we admired the way you were, like, so quick to get to know the players and when you were commentating how fast you were able to move into a play, move into the next play. But we've just admired you and I'd like to thank you for, for from us and for, you know, the Camogie Association, the whole lot, um, for promoting the game for many, many years before... You know, I suppose before, like Sean Walsh, obviously we've mentioned him and Galway Bay FM, we're always very supportive of it, but you've brought it to a new level and um, and for that we're thankful. But 
I was saying there, you were with Galway Bay for 19 years and we said we had to loan you to the neighbours, uh, Claire <laughs> FM, just for a little while, you know, to, to show them how to how it was done. And uh, you kind of moved into the, the football side of it a little bit more because you, you have such an interest in, you know, women's sport. It's not just Camogie, you know. But um, And I was saying to Martina, correct us if we're wrong now, but you won the Journalist um, of the Year, like the, the Football of the Year in 2020. Is that right? By the LGFA? That's, that's correct. In 20, 20, would it be 2018? Um, ah, year, 2018. Year, year of Waters. And like, the one thing I liked about that was, like, there's so many awards out there now and some of us have to apply for them and this, that, and the other. But that was actually one where I was nominated by Galway uh, to be the, the Connacht winner. And then I was, the National Committee um, announced me as the overall winner. So it was a wonderful honour too for myself. Uh, but like at the, at the end of the day, as you're talking there, the Camogie, like the Camogie has always been my first love. And it, it, it's funny because I became the Camogie correspondent in Galway Bay FM back in 2008. And I probably was just perfect timing because... Things were changing in regards to... Prof- like, I'm not saying there was any lack of professionalism in the game, but I suppose modern methods were starting to come in. There was a new group of players there, plus, plus some great stalwarts that still would have played with yourselves there too. And the one thing I always said from day one when I got the op- opportunity to be the Camogie correspondent for Goway Bay FM is I was going to treat these players exactly the same way as the men. I would push for them to be promoted. I would push for commentaries I would push whatever ever coverage I could get, whether it was on the radio, whether it was in the newspaper and the Connacht Tribune, in particular the Tomb Herald, uh, whether it was a podcast in the modern game. But likewise, too, I will also shoot from the lip every now and again, and I might say some <laughs> things <laughs> that people don't like hearing. But the reason I do that is very, very simple because these players deserve respect. He deserves res- respect. He didn't get the respect that he deserved. You people like Sean Walsh and Frank Kearney and, and others there that were doing it for you at the time, but you weren't getting the column inches, the pages. Now there's great people like Aino O'Reilly, that uh, Tommy Devan, and many others are doing now. And even as you mentioned there about promotion, I just want to give a shout out to Sarah Goffin, first things first. Delighted yeah. that she's finally getting the acknowledgement and she deserves for yeah, all the work absolutely. she's doing as well. And even though I'm not the Komogi correspondent anymore and I don't get to as many games as I'd like, I still get out to as many as I can. I'll all, always keep a keen interest. We had a national podcast going for three years uh, covering Komogi and ladies football as well. And look, at the end of the day, I'm a Galway man. Like, you know, I might be in Crow Park in 2021 as a neutral, but I jumped <laughs> off my seat. Siobhan McGrath scored the goal. <laughs> even though I've made, <laughs> exactly. great friends, I've made great friends down in Cork, like, you know, like um, Amy O'Connor was, I was one of the first people to contact her when she got to lift the O'Duffy Cup last year as well and many in Kilkenny too and what, I, and what I like to see now it's going in the right direction it's still a long way to go uh, but at least there's people out there that are, are getting it out there including and delighted now that yourselves along with Paul are doing this podcast as well because it's important that we get out there and just remind people you know, yeah. there's, and it's not just saying this as an advocate for women's sports. I'm saying it because these are talented athletes that go out there, give their best. And sometimes we criticize them, but that's because we love them and we think they should be up there competing. But we'll that's be following right. Galway, we'll be following Galway teams, we'll be following our own clubs. And look, at the end of the day, there's, at the moment, Galway, I don't think, has ever had such an abundance of talent that it does at the moment. And hopefully that leads to more success in the near future. Well, that's for sure. And I just felt as if we've had a run of commentary there in an island. <laughs> I yeah. think you need to take a drink of water there. Don't <laughs> take a drink. Don't take your advice there. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, here, there's no promotional videos now. What's on that glass? <laughs> oh, uh, I, I, held it, I held it backwards now. It is more. Oh, yeah. I'm more. only joking. <laughs> yeah, on, on that, actually, Darren, that podcast that you said that was covering, that was called a Sports Daz. And... Mm. Um, you're being very modest now as well because the year you brought that out as well, you won a digital promotion award from the Camogie Association. So you're not sliding away from Anton. So while we might have been winning medals, you were winning accolades you were as well. Winning awards, yeah. Oh, but look, the thing is, and look, it, as I touched on already, it's always great to be acknowledged for the work that you do. And like nobody will ever say they don't care about awards. Of course you do, but it's never yeah. been about for me. For me, as I often said to people that would come over and thank me for the coverage I would have given to Goey Camogie or even Goey Ladies Football or even nationally or whatever sport it is, I always replied, I'm the one lucky enough to tell the story. Like when you take from 2008 to 2018, all the heartbreak, 20, I was only watching the 2013 highlights of the 2013 final on Reeling in the Years the other day and Alicia Riley in there and I still get a lift. 
you know, yeah, yes, when, yeah, yeah. when I see that goal, or Neve McGrath smiling as she turned around with the free one, we all knew, oh, knew that was this. Yeah. And yeah. then I still remember at 2011 when Ursula Jacobs scored that goal, you know, and like. We, we spoke oh, to her about that too, Darren. Don't worry. We, we give her yeah. the dig about it. <laughs> eight, eight, eight minutes to go, and I can still see it as clear yeah. as daylight. But. But like, not just that, then we've seen some great minor under 16 teams coming through as well. Look with the intermediates as well. And both in 2009 and in 2013, when we won, we lost the 2012 final after a replay. Um, the players that came through there, like you take 2009, for example, where Sarah Durbin had been locked off the Galway senior team, rolled their mm-hmm. sleeves up, came back in right. with the intermediates. Well, you, yeah. you think you were playing in that team too. Yeah, yeah. And what you got is, um, ended up putting in such stormy performances, came back in, and end up becoming one of the greatest players ever to play for Galway, you know. Yeah. So yeah, Heather yeah. Cooney was in that team as well. Like, you know, and then the current crop um, are from the class of 2013, 2012, 2013, that won the you intermediate, know, like with Shawnee Healy, for Dunno, Ava yeah. was in 2012 as well. And then the clubs, like Climber, one of the greatest ever performances I've seen by a Galway team in Crow Park when they yeah. won the All Ireland in 2011 as well. And I was just lucky to tell those stories. And I was lucky to be in the commentary box, whether it was Sharon Glenn or Imelda Hobbins. And Look, I, I and I'm a fan now. I still cover games, but I love going to be a fan as well. In 2019, I was there as a fan as well. Brought the family and what a performance against Kilkenny. And I'll always continue to do that. And hopefully, my own girls will end up picking up the game. Granted, they might be playing for Ross Common if they end up being good enough. But It'll be good enough. I would. We <laughs> like the Rossies. Yeah, once they're playing, isn't that isn't yeah. that the main thing? Oh, Look, yeah. Take take us back, Darren. How did you actually get into? the whole reporting or how did it come about? You know, had you always an interest maybe in journalism or did you go down a college route or did you just branch out and decide this could be something I'd like to Uh, pursue? Well, I suppose, look, like most children, I always had a great interest in sport. I can remember my mother, I was one day I was bored in the house, I think it was about seven years of age, and my mother telling me there was a soccer match on in the television. Why don't you go watch that? It just happened to be the very first game of Mexico 86, and I was hooked in that. And then started discovering GEA, and of course, I was at that right age when Galway won the McCarthy Cups in 87 and 88, and... Like I remember no lane scoring the goals. I remember nearly getting squashed one of the homecomings. <laughs> and so the interest the interest in sport was there. I think around 12, I kind of realized that my best position in the field was probably behind a microphone. I still played a bit, but uh, I, uh, I wasn't I wasn't standing out in team selections now or anything like that. But um and I think I, re- I retired as a junior sea hurler when I was 23 or 24. But um yeah, I just had the interest in it and I'd be out in my back garden or out in the front. I uh, get anybody from Ballinasloe watching this now that knows me would tell you all about it. And I'd start commentating on uh, going through World Cups. My aunt once got me a 1982 poster and I did a commentary of every single game in that wow. World Cup, even though I think I only knew about half a dozen players. Yeah. Uh, regards Gaelic games, like the, look, the interest was there with Galway and it continued forward. So when I went to college, I went to study journalism. I'd done yeah. some work experience in patches before. And then how I ended up in Galway Bay FM was a funny one because one day I just said I'd go up and ask. And it was the summer of 1999. I actually went to the Connacht Trippian first, would you believe it? Because I thought there'd be a better chance of getting a job in there. And that was the first time I met John McIntyre. And John was very enthusiastic, but did say I'd probably have to do news as well. And the local elections were coming up. And I, I, I do my bit of news. I did my bit of <laughs> and, I uh, and, and do uh, and help out Galway Talks. But I mean, that's like, I, Wasn't I, don't, your interest, like... I don't have the knowledge of the experience. I saw my interest exactly, yes. So I went up to Galway Bay FM. No demo on me, no nothing, because I had actually planned going there. I planned to go to the Tribune, <laughs> yeah. and I met Kevin Dwyer. So I was waiting about 15 minutes or so, and then Kevin came out to me, had a chat, and he realized I was young, and do did I drive? And no, I didn't drive. But if I if, if I want you to go to a match, could you could you go to a game? And I said, oh, yes. You could ask me to go to Mars. I would have just to get in the door. Like <laughs> so he said he'd give me a ring in about a week or two. So that was fair enough. So I was doing night porter in the East County Hotel in Ballinasloe at the time. So anyway, I went back to work. Didn't take much off it. I said I'd ring again in a week or two or whatever. So I think it was on the Saturday morning. Now, I was up all night, so I was in bed. I got a phone call uh, from Kevin Dwyer wanting to know what I go to. It was, I think it was Kilbacon Egan St. Thomas's. 
all right, in the intermediate hurling championships. And we're talking St. Thomas's intermediate, you know, far back oh, we're talking yeah, here yeah. now. And in Ballandarian on that Sunday, half past two or something like that. So yes, 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 definitely. So now I had to try and get Saturday night off off work. So a good friend of mine, Jerry Seal, who's well involved in Ballon Slow GEA, was my manager at the time, and I said it to him because I knew this was an opportunity. So Jerry said to me, I'll do you a deal. Work your shift. I'll give you a room at the hotel to get a few hours sleep, and I'll bring you to the match. Okay. That was so, sound of them. Def- def- definitely a deal and all that. So <laughs> did the shift, finished about eight, half eight in the morning, went to bed, got up a few hours later, freshened myself up, all super excited. Just said, there's only going to be a few couple of updates, like, you know, but it was just to get my foot in the door. So off we head to Ballandarian anyway. I arrived at Ballandarian at five past two. There wasn't a soul or a sinner in the place. That's Ballandarian. So that's, kind of that's, what t- that's what I keep saying, Darren. Yeah, there's no, like, 25 minutes before throw and there's nobody Jeez, in the place. Nice and I'm, freak- I, I'm freaking out now because first day, I, and I, <laughs> I feel like I've done something wrong. So yeah. I rang Kevin Dwyer in a way and uh, he hadn't heard a thing. So he said he'd get back to me. And so he contacted Phelan Murphy, I think, and next thing the game had been called off and nobody told Go Away FM. Ah. So after all that, my very first match 25 years ago didn't actually happen. Oh, so oh it, it was the following Saturday at Noir we playing Capitago <laughs> in the Intermediate Championship in the Duncan Park, so a bit closer to home. Mm-hmm. And that's when I finally got a chance. And sure, I was I only to do a full time report, and I was you know super nervous and all that. I was working in the pub that night, but went into one of the rooms in the pub, wrote, wrote it out, record, we got phoned in. I can't actually remember who was presenting at the time. It could have been Tom Gilmore. I'm not too sure. But next thing, um, which I did it all day. I won the game, and I remember saying, um, "Rain soaked, battle of slow." And then I finished up, Darren Kelly, go away from sport, Duncan Park. And I remember this presenter was saying, thank you, Darren, from Rain Soap Battle of the Slow. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> uh, and, 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 and from this, history. the rest is history. Bar a couple of breaks when I was in college a couple of times, and obviously that year in Clare, I've been pretty much doing a sense. Well, doing sense, fair yeah. play to you. Oh, well, you most certainly yeah. was. And I suppose so many people recognise the voice before they recognise the face, you know, more so than oh, yeah. Yet, you're, yeah, you're more the voice of the radio, like. Go especially on. my voice too, I've probably pushed it a bit in hard at times, especially those great Camogie final commentaries. After, you wouldn't be a bit excited with life, Ranton. Oh, Do you know, no, you'd no, be very, no. very calm. You're pretty calm, yeah. You know, I'm going to be very <laughs> nervous there. You have to try and get me on my shell, like, you know. Here, sometimes, sometimes, Darren, when I'd be listening to you, if I wasn't at the match or something, I'd say, Jesus, who's after scoring? Yeah. <laughs> because you'd be so in the moment, we oh, don't know. And I'm no. like, give it a second, give it a second. So, I know you're, you're brilliant at it. But uh, do you know what, Darren, like, uh, you, you're leaving your mark all the time, so fair play to you for that. And look, at, it's all about promotion of, of whatever you're promoting, whether it's women in sport or men in sport, you know. But the other thing as well, if I just even saying that, and, I, and I, I do, and I think I've been mellowing a little bit in the last couple of years, just a little bit. But um, <laughs> I, I, I always remember, I, I think it was a year or so later, um, two junior hurling finals in Atten Raya. I was there both weekends, and it was one of the coldest winters going. And I was freezing. And you know when you're cold and you're out, you're just not in the mood. Miserable, yeah. Well, it was just a reminder. I had to remind myself how lucky it was. And I just looked and went, these lads are playing a county final. These lads have trained all year in the cold and the muck for this. The least I could do is make it the occasion it deserves to be. So I have. I've treated every, I treat every match like a county final, like an All-Ireland final, whatever the case may be. like Because those players put out the sacrifice. I'm lucky. I have a job where I, you know, I make a living living out of this. Yeah, yeah. Well, which yeah. players, including yourselves too, and even going back to the cover, what we mentioned earlier on about the Camogie in two thousand and eight, I was going to treat these players with the exact same amount of respect as they deserved, and the same as their male counterparts. You know, what I mean, push for them, but also call them out when it wasn't a good day. And you know, I've always stuck to that, even at times yeah. when people think am I being overcritical. But at the end of the day, what would we be doing if it was a hurling team? The exact same yeah, thing. Absolutely. You know, no, yeah. exactly. And you know, I think you know, you mentioned there you treat your ju- the junior team like it was a senior team when you're commenting because at the end of the day, you think of the elderly, someone can't make a match, a grandchild is playing, you are bringing that game to live them live and mm-hmm. alive to them. And they want to be able to, I suppose, play every puck of the ball. And the most certainly do with Darren when you're commentating, anyhow, because it's <laughs> up and down, it's like 60 miles an hour. <laughs> But they won't, they won't forget it anyway. But they won't forget it. <laughs> I'm sure there's been some pulled hamstrings in some sitting rooms. Which and clear yeah. to me, from, from your time, I suppose, over the years, Darren, changes and maybe how the game has evolved promotion-wise. You were talking there about Ballandurian. No one told Galway Bay. And it's probably a sign of the times. Social media wasn't the dumb thing 
25 years ago. Whereas now it's the, the push of a button, it's it's everywhere. And I think Galway has evolved over the years when it comes to the promotion of the game. And have you noticed that over the last 25 years and and how? Yeah, well, I mean, like before I got, I was PRO for three years, before I was PRO, you had Martina Malloy there. She did great work as well, moving it up to a level. And I suppose it was the social media crazes when I came in because... When I was asked, um, I think, I don't remember who actually asked me, but it was Geraldine McGrath was chairperson at the time, so she would have been one of them. Mm-hmm. And look, I wouldn't have had time to go doing programs and things like this, but I said, listen, I'll come in and I'll, you know, make sure that we get the word out what's going on and get the yeah. scores up on Facebook, which was first, we didn't go to Twitter mm-hmm. straight away. And it was just pretty much to like, again, it's to let people know what's going on because that's the biggest issue at the end of the day is even I look now, with some clubs and even some counties these days. And the thing that drives me mad is get, tell the score and tell us when it's happened. You know, the yeah. two key things, what people want to know. And yeah. like, I, I won't go, go to the thing, but I hear someone, well done, our girls in this. Well done for what? You know I what know. I mean? Tell yeah. me so I can actually go and say, well done and whatever you did like, you know. Exactly. But, it's the Wellington Throne competition. That's what it was. Yeah, sure. it, it could be the who knows? It could be the under 10 titty wings out in our ground. I, I, know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. But, well, that was what we focused on, and we focused on build, building the Facebook page up, and then eventually the Twitter page as well. And it was just the, the, the basics, the simple, like, you know, what was the score? Who was That's playing? It. What's the team? Let people know it's on. Where can you get tickets? Whatever the case may be. So I was looking in that thing that I just came in with the social media was really, really taken off. Look, at the end of the day, too, having a team being very, very successful helped. We won the All-Ireland yes. in 2013. Yeah. Yeah. We won the league in 2015. You know, we were having underage success as well. And uh, so after three years then, because look, doing that job is great, but the job I do, and sometimes you have that clash, that kind of conflict of interest as such, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I was great, uh, delighted when I heard of, heard of a man called Brian Malloy that was wanted to come in, and we all know exactly where he's moved up in Camogie. Yeah, yeah. Now as yeah. Well. And, and Brian, Brian has come in too, but there's one person from the day, first day I met her, with such a great interest and enthusiasm in Camogie was Sarah Govern. And I know it's the second time I mentioned her here as well. Yeah. And when she came in, then she started doing all these things even I wasn't doing. And she's pushing there, there's a website going there as well. But she's good yeah, behind she's these people as well. It's not yeah. just one person team and all that. Like there's been, I've worked with three great, committees in Galway Camogie, you know, between Jerry McGrath's crew, Jerry Henley, and of course, Brian Griffin's now as well, and moving us up that next level the whole time. Now, Galway Camogie, if there's club fixtures on, we know when they're happening. You know, yeah. when there's in Rangers County on. Yeah, we well, now we know, like, some players, even for the casual uh, supporter, they might only dip in and out. They now know geez, some of these players, like, representing our club, or who, who yeah. are these people and all that. And Sarah has done that, not just at county level, but she's now moved on to the provinces as well, as doing her club the whole time as well. And I've always said with PR, that's what it's about. It's just, you, you, it's not the hardest job at the lot. Just be organised and get yes. that information out there. They have an interest. And when you do that... The interest will come in because they know they're finding out what's going on, and then they'll start showing up to a game or start sending their dollars to matches as well. Yeah, um, so for like, sure. As you and said, there, Martina, with, that, Darren, with, with with Sarah as well. Like she just she has a great interest, like we said. But even with the schools, because myself and Martina are just practically running the kind of schools, and it's very difficult, obviously, as being teachers with full time positions and trying to. But she gets the score from us. She gets the scores from the refs and she puts it up and it's generated brilliant interest. Oh, has she's, just, she's unreal. You know, and putting up, um, and even in our own oh, yeah. school, you know, they're, they've gone, you know, really overboard on the PR, which is brilliant. They put up player profiles and, you know, their favourite food and, you know, it's lovely to see. And that started happening with Sarah in the, in the county thing and different things, you know, players, if there's a match on the county players, it's lovely. And even that's exactly it to get the word out there as well because mm-hmm. people want to know these games are on. They want to know who's involved and they want to know where they can go see it. But when, when nobody tells them, they're not going to know. So at least with the work you've been doing and having Sarah helping out, no, no doubt there's other people behind the scene as well, getting the word out there. And the more we can get the word out there about Kamoki, especially in Galway with what we're talking about here, is the more interest will be there. And we've seen this in recent years. Like you take there some of the championship matches we've had in Kenny Park in the last couple of years, massive crowds. Yeah. Where yeah, you yeah. go to other counties and you might see a manny's dog and maybe 20 other people. But it's yeah. simply because Galway have dri- driven the product again, obviously helped by talents on the field to play yeah. and getting yeah. good results. But I remember like I was commentating on the Kilkenny game in the group stage of the championship in 2022. I, don't know, I felt packed, you know. 
And then you throw in the, in the integration at the moment and the Kamogi going in with hurling and double headers as well. That's only going to help as well. And just to maximise the amount of information and promotion we get out of these events because at the end of the day, there's great interest in Galway Kamogi and there's great interest in our Kamogi players. But the biggest thing we have to do is make sure we keep telling them when it's on, what's on, who's and involved and exactly. encourage them to get out there. Encourage them to get out there because 20 years ago if a game is cancelled you would have to turn up to the pitch to find out whereas now it's just up it's up on social, social media. media straight away it's fantastic yeah, yeah you could be ready to be going out the door and the next thing you know game postponed or something's up yeah. on Facebook so but I suppose on that Harky we're, we're here talking about Camogie but what do you think of the upcoming season Darren then with our, our, our seniors yeah, yeah. yeah. just going looking ahead looking ahead say. what do you think yeah yeah well look the, the reality is that Galway are one of the top three teams in the country. And that's as simple as that. Tipperary, I know Waterford were in the All-Ireland final last year. And Tipperary have been knocking on the door, no doubt they'll push as well. But we're there, thereabouts. Now, we're having this conversation just before the opening game of the um, league. That's yeah. next week. I guess King, I think it's against King Kenny, is it? But, Claire, um, it's so we have, no, we're not... Uh, weeks Claire, time, Claire, is it? Is it? Yeah. Sorry, my apologies. It's, uh, I was, um, it, 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 the... We don't know actually know who's in or out yet. And no, that would be important. Yeah. Like I thought last year was a very, very good year for Galway Kamogi. Uh we won a league title, but we also lost five key players at the start of the year. Like Heather Cooney retired and she was allowed to slip away quietly, which is another thing that I was to be hunting critical of. We should be celebrating our great players when they do step away because yeah. they've given so much to Galway Kamogi. Lorraine Ryan a couple of years ago, gone barely barely worried about it. Yeah. Need Kenny, we don't know her situation at the moment. Yeah. Will she be back? Will she not? Uh, obviously, Sarah Durbin was late coming back in last year, and then you had Sarah Healy and Catherine Fennerty away too. So it was challenging. I think you're bringing in all the intermediates as well that won the All Ireland the previous year. When you look at the results, we won the league of the seniors. The intermediates were competitive in all their matches. I know they didn't get the results, but yeah. that when you're talking of technically a third string team, that was a great innings on year one for Connor Dolan as well. It was, so go back yeah. to the question. You asked me this year. Look, there'll be pressure on Colin Murray this year because we haven't been in the Ireland final in 2021. Well, Galway now expects to be in all Ireland finals. So do Cork, so do Kilkenny. We've been squeezed out the last couple of years. The league again. Look, we, we hear rumours and bits and bobs who's in, who's out. Until that opening game of the league, we won't know the answers to that for certain. And I think we'd be better qualified to talk then. Hopefully, there's a few of those players I mentioned back. No doubt there'll be one or two that have gone away as well. A good league, but again, it's about finding finding players. Like you take Anya Keane, for example, a player that really came through last year as well. She won Gardner establishing herself a little bit more as well in yeah. the team too. That's what we want to come into a championship team. I'm glad the championship was back to two groups of six, and not yes. like taken away. But like Waterford kind of got to last year's All Ireland final by default. In fairness, because they never yeah. had to play Galway Cork or Kilkenny. Kenny. Yeah. But look at yeah. the atmosphere they brought that day, which is great for Camogie too. We'll get to an All Ireland semi final. I've no doubt about that. I can't see any route unless the draw really goes lopsided like it did on Kenny last year that would stop us getting to an Ireland semi-final. And again, as you know yourselves when playing, and I remember having conversations with many players before with the breakthrough in 2013, it's about getting two performances right. Yeah. Last year against Cork, referee might have done his favours in one or two decisions, but he didn't cost us the match. We only yeah. scored two six in an Ireland semi-final. Regardless of conditions, that's not good enough. And we have to do much be better than that. But I do believe Galway will be there or thereabouts. I believe we have a great talent pool of players at the moment. And as young players gain in more experience, like there's players I watched on the 16 level that are now leaders. When you talk about Carrie Dolan, Siobhan McGrath, just two off the top of my head. Roche yeah. Black. I remember once her holding a Galway on the 16 defence together. Look, there was other players there, but she was the standout player and yeah. getting a very, very deserved all-star as well in defence too. Uh, we have another, we I, like we have a talent pool coming through. But I don't believe we will go 17 years without winning in All-Ireland again. But we have to get to that semi-final first and then put in the performances. And when we see the players that we have there uh, going forward, the league, look, at the end of the day, I'm going to be concerned about winning leagues now, but it's always nice to win a trophy. It's about championship. Get to that semi-final and then hopefully then we can get the two results right. Yeah, and no doubt you'll be With there the every every minute of, of, of all of those games, Darren, OK? Um. What we were talking also, Darren, just your thoughts on it before we finish up this new um, press release coming from about this so-called new centre of excellence for the promotion and maybe inclusivity of GA ladies football and Camogie and the proposed site and Karen Moore. What, what are your thoughts on that? Or maybe you haven't heard anything. 
Well, oh, no, I've heard it right. Um, <laughs> it's on the front of the Tribune. You better have heard it. <laughs> What do you think? I announced it I announced it on radio last week. But well, you know, I was hoping that you'd say it before I'd say it. But um, look at <laughs> it, it it has no, to be no. massive strides if it's a massive strike. And look, let's let's the first thing let's say fair play Galway GA, Galway LGFA and Galway Kamogi coming Absolutely. together, coming not together. waiting for the delayed drawn out process that's going on in Dublin at the Back moment yeah, the integration. Integration we all know yeah. will be a great thing for everybody if it's done properly. And there's some probably delaying us at the moment that don't need to be delaying us. But back to the question, at least there's a plan. And it's great yes. to see, look, Goey Airport is there. There's an opportunity. There's no guarantees that anything will come of this. But come in with a plan and come in working together. Because yeah. whatever happens, it has to be about boys and girls, uh, men and women playing sport. Like we're talking about seven pitches, we're talking about indoor facilities, gyms oh, yeah. and everything like that, 30 to 40 acres. It's a brilliant initiative. And I give, again, credit to everybody involved in coming together to do that. I hope it happens for them, uh, but it's great to see that Galway are leading the way in how yeah. integration can work. Going oh, like there are sure. other counties that are good as well, um, you know. But at least we're showing in Galway there's a plan in place, working together, and I've no doubt when the integration eventually does happen, that'll be the way forward as well. And it's just I'm delighted to see it, and I hope mm, it works out. Absolutely. But I think it 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 is it will be its first of its kind though in Ireland, won't it? That the three um the three have come together, have come together, yeah, for yeah, a county. It would say. Any, any, like. You, you know yourself, Camogie and ladies football have it depends on the goodwill of clubs and county yes, boards to get pitches okay. for far too long at this stage. You know, because people, and then there'll be people out there you'll see on social media who don't even know what they're talking about saying uh, they're different organisations. The GA was built on by the men and women of Ireland, not just, it just happened yeah. to be the lads seen to be playing under this organisation. Yeah. But with the the goodwill, it's only right now that the conversations are taking place to get equality across the board for both male and female players as well. And as you said there, Aoife, we've seen centres of excellence in other uh, counties and provinces. We've won just up the road in Bacon that we'll all be at this weekend. For well, the you call it Bacon. We were calling it Bacon. Well. I reckon it's Bacon, Darren. Posh. We're, we're, <laughs> Darren, we're posh. We're calling it, we're posh. Do you hear me? Bacon. Hey, oh, no, I, no, I, I know. I had the cabbage. I had the cabbage and spuds with it today, so it's probably taking about that. <laughs> I actually have bacon as well today. <laughs> You're mad for bacon. There you go. You're mad for bacon, and I'm mad for bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next day we'll try the bacon out and see what it's like. <laughs> but, yeah. but um, but yeah, but most of it be GA. Uh, groups there has been some work done by like Tipperary obviously Camogie have their grounds down on the rag there as well uh, there's been good work done up in Armagh with ladies football Waterford have a plan in place there at the moment too um, we, there's the ground in Kilrecal there as well I know things have stalled there for a while but it's Camogie ground there too but yeah. if we're going to all going together going forward then we all have to go together and again yeah. And just like Brian Malloy said in an interview in Goy BFM recently, there's no reason why the administration can't be coming together now at national level and working as one unit. At least Galway are working as one unit with this proposal and kind of going, right, this is for Camogie, this is for ladies football, this is for hurling and football for the lads as well. And that's the way forward it should be. Whether it's the first one or not, I'm not too sure, but I, I, I'm not aware of one off the yeah, top of my head. I'm delighted again to see Galway leading the way. Well, uh, here, I, it says it on the kind of Tribune. So if it says it on the Tribune, I'm believing it. Good enough for me, sorry. Yeah. That's good enough for most, me too. <laughs> yeah, the most important thing anyway is the conversation has started and, you know, I hope we see it. I hope the likes of us see it whenever, <laughs> not that anything, but, you know, where was it when when we when we needed as well? And look, at, as you said, Darren, it's lovely for them all to come together because women have been playing second fiddle, but at the disposal of GA clubs fighting for fighting for pitches. So it's only, it's only right, <laughs> you know. Look, at, we could talk um, all night. We could to talk you. all night to you, Darren. Okay, you're an absolute tonic. You're a wonderful role model and advocate, and we we enjoy listening to you. We enjoy chatting to you. Uh, you're always up for a bit of banter, and you're always going to give us a good bit of advice when when we need it as well. Keep doing what you're doing. For sure. Um, no doubt, I'll meet you somewhere at a schools match, or we'll meet you on the sideline, or we look up and we'll we'll find you above in a press box or something like that. But um, we are really grateful and really thankful to you. And Galway Camogie are very lucky, and Harlan and and Galway in general are very lucky to have you, Darren. And we appreciate all your all your time and your effort. And no doubt we'll cross paths again. Well, listen again, Martina. Eva, thanks a million for having me on, and well done and getting this podcast up and running again. Like you know, I'm delighted to see it. I catch it most weeks as well in the Dell's Ladies Football Show too. And keep keep it going as well because at the end of the day. But sometimes, sometimes it has to be a bit critical. But at the end of the day, we're all here to promote the game. 
That's all this is to get the message out there. And that's what exactly. we continue to do. Darren, you're a star. Darren, thanks a minute. Um, oh, the other thing we forgot to say oh, to him, we'll to have say. to take you on in the game of chess. I hear you're fairly handy with the yeah. chess. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I wanted to Anytime. ask you. Yeah, we want to ask you. We're very interested in the chess. She's yeah. joking, oh, don't mind her. She I'm was not talking. Joking. She wanted to go oh, play I'm... badminton ten minutes before that. <laughs> she doesn't know what she wants. Do you know what I'll do now? The next, the next time I'm going to one of the St. Raphael's matches, I'll back the chessboard with me as well. So right we'll, get we'll, get a, we'll get a chessboard out the main stand there. We'll have a crack. Well, do you know what I'll do? I'll have watched about Gambit about ten times, Darren, so I'll be ready for you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. I think so. Oh, I, uh, I'm sure you will be too. Uh, <laughs> Darren, thanks, thanks a million. And You're a star, and we'll talk soon. Talk soon for sure. Yes, thanks, right, a thanks a million. Take care, Darren. Mind See yourself. You bye, bye, bye. Oh, funny okay. man. He is funny. Yeah. Yeah. But nobody in fairness to him, he's absolutely wonderful. And what would we do without him? No, he has done so much for God. We come over yeah. in sports down, down through the years, oh, and really? you know, um, obviously Tommy and um, Amelda have kind of taken over the reins now. Exactly, yeah. and Mel you know, so it's great that they're keeping it going. Absolutely, and, um, but he's always good. You'll always find him if you're looking to to put something on Galway Bay or to mention something. It's, he'll do it's, it. He's he's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. I suppose you know, um, like we've we've mentioned Sarah. I know we've mentioned Sarah Garhan a few times, but um, to all the PROs in every club, do you know, absolutely. to maybe take a little and stay yeah. behind. Actually, the Sarah's must be because there's a Sarah Nolan in guard. She's one of my students. Good woman, Sarah. Keep up the good work in Coleman's. And Sarah Slevin and Erdogan. And so, Sarah, best look for this year. And to all it's of the, the Sarahs and the to Sarahs all of the, the PROs, the PROs yeah. in every club, Just you're doing amazing doing, work. Yeah, keep yeah. doing what you're doing. Keep and, promoting it. You know, it might be tireless and you mightn't get much thanks for it. But at the end of the day, um, it's all about the promotion of the game. Um, so I'd say, so I'd say that's it. That's probably friend. all we have uh, time for today. But yeah. I know we didn't rightly get to finish out um, what we were talking about, you know, the findings of the... The, the, the findings of that press release. And so we might finish them next week and, yeah. and go through them, have a good read of them and a good bit of research and look into it ourselves. Exactly. And, exactly. and speak to you. So. And just, you know, tune in, get on your Facebook page, get onto your Twitter, check where there's a game going on or start of the, the senior league and make sure you get out there and, and, and fill the seats, as they say in the ad. And I don't know if any of you have seen before we go for the Allianz ad, I think it's wonderful. Oh yeah, yeah and, you know, about, and and the the little lad or Lidl, and the whatever the Lidl or the little lad as well are absolutely to brilliant. Seats, yeah. yeah, exactly. And if only ten more people go next week that didn't go this week, isn't that what it's all about? Yeah, fill the so, seats, support the girls, and support your friend, support your girlfriend. Uh, let the boyfriends come out. You know, everyone come out and and try and support women in some way, shape, or form for the next uh, for for this league and the championship to come as well. So. Um, I guess that's it. Keep subscribing. Anyone that hasn't to the Galway Maroon and White yeah. uh, pod. And uh, that's it for me, my friend. And it's goodbye from me, my friend. And goodbye from me. And um, we shall talk to you all uh, next week. All right. Take care. Thanks a million. Mind yourselves. Bye.